Over the last several weeks, I've been releasing videos regarding the basics of embroidery. I've covered choosing a machine, stabilizers, needles, thread, hooping your fabric, and now we're going to take all that information and apply it to an actual project. Welcome back everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So let's get started. So our project today is this adorable little drawstring gift bag. So let's talk about stabilizer. For this particular project, I'm using a pretty sturdy cotton woven fabric. There's not a lot of stretch to it. When you're using a fabric like this, a good stabilizer option is going to be a tear away. If you're using a stretchier fabric like a knit, then you would want to use a cutaway stabilizer. How about your needle? When embroidering, you want to make sure that you are using an embroidery needle. The wide iron groove will help prevent friction, allowing trouble-free stitching. There are many different brand choices, but I'm a fangirl of Schmetz, so I chose to use the embroidery needle size 11 in the chrome option. I already swapped that out on the machine. Polyester and rayon are both great choices when it comes to thread options. I really like Poly Neon polyester thread. It's made by Madeira. It's really strong and it has a really pretty sheen to it. Also, when getting your thread around, don't forget about the bobbin thread. When embroidering, you want to use a lighter weight, usually 60 weight, bobbin thread. This particular one is also polyester. So the benefit of having a lighter weight thread is that the upper thread is not going to have to fight for tension. Also, make sure that it's full before you begin because there's nothing worse than getting in the middle of your project and you run out of bobbin thread. Now comes the fun part, or the not so fun part. It's kind of up for debate. The reason that I say it's up for debate is hooping is an art. It takes a lot of practice, but it definitely is achievable, so don't worry. Let's remove the inner ring. I've already marked the center of my fabric. I just folded it in half. And taking my pen, I marked the middle. I'm not placing it directly in the middle because I don't want my design right here. I actually want it closer to the bottom. When I make my bag, it'll look, it'll look better down below. Actually, I'm going to remark here. You can hardly see it anymore. You've got your center here and then an arrow up here. So I'm going to place this first. You just need the stabilizer all the way around the ring, a little bit beyond the ring. That doesn't have to be centered because we are just going to tear it off after we're done stitching our design anyway. So as long as it's all the way around the hoop, we're good. Now the fabric you have to be more careful with. On camera, it's kind of difficult to see, but in person, it's much easier. I can see where that line is, and then I've got my marking, and I want to pull it down here because I want the fabric all the way around. So I'm just going to kind of move that back. I see the mark. There we go. So then I want to smooth the fabric as best I can. Perfect. Okay. Now I want the inner ring. It's got an arrow on the top as well. I don't want to move my fabric. How is my mark centered there? And that is so far off. Let's look at that again. Something's not right. Let's figure it out. I want to kind of get the top in first and then push and work down towards the screw. There we go. It's pretty even. I don't have to re-hoop it. Now, oftentimes you have to re-hoop several times. There is nothing wrong with that. Hooping can take longer than actually embroidering your project. So you just want to make sure that you can't pinch the fabric and it has like a drum effect. And actually, I need to push that a little bit more. 
You want to make sure that that inner hoop is all the way down. There we go. Now we can set that aside and get our machine ready. All right, let's go in and select our design. The one that we're going to do today is in here. Now looking at the LCD screen, I want to show you a few things. You've got your hoops up here. Then you've got your display, your different selections. The one through eight is just showing different pages. So you've got eight pages worth of these letters. To navigate through those, you use these arrows down here. Just like that. Today we are going to be embroidering a K. Now notice that the small one gets blocked out. We cannot use that particular hoop because it's too small. We have to use the four by four. That's one thing that I really love about embroidery machines. They're smart. They tell you, <laughs> they tell you when you can use something and when you can't, or if something's outside the border. It's really nice, especially when you're just beginning. Now we'll just hit set because we've chosen our design. In this area, you can make changes. You can move it around. Let's hit that. All different directions. If at any point you're like, oh shoot, I need to start over, just hit that little button in the middle. It'll bring it right back to the middle. Then you can adjust the size. You can squeeze it in, squeeze it in this way. And that's just a preference. You just play around with the size. Rotate 90 degrees, 10 degrees, boop, boop, one. <laughs> Doesn't that look fancy? Could kind of make it an H. <laughs> Reset. Here's the mirror button. We've got delete. We all know what that is. Let's do that again. There. Hit our design. I've selected it. Now I want to move it. I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom of my hoop. And I want to change the size just a little smaller. That's good. I'm going to hit OK. I don't need to rotate it at all. I want it nice and straight. I'm not going to use the mirror button. And I'm not going to delete it again. <laughs> Now that I've selected my design, I'm going to select my colors. So you can go into the thread. These buttons up here, you can toggle through the components of the design. I'll just hit back and forth a couple of times. This one, it goes to the leaves. And then when I hit it again, it brings the K back. This particular design only has two colors, so that makes it nice and easy. I'm going to start with the K. Since I'm using green fabric for the drawstring bag, I'm going to make the K white so it pops and it coordinates. Then I want to make the leaves green. To change the color, again, these are the pages, so we're going to use the arrows to move over. And I already know the color I want is this one right here. Oh, and I changed the K instead of the leaves. So let's just change that back. I'm going to move back to white and make that white again. And then I'm going to toggle through the design. Now I'm on the leaves. Now I can move through to the color pages and pick my color. There we go. If you want a preview of your design, you can just go up to this little button here and hit that and you can see the white K and the green leaves. Now obviously this is not going to be identical for every embroidery machine, but it gives you an idea of how you move back and forth and make your selections. And then you've got your add button, so if you wanted to add anything else, you just, I'm just gonna hit something, there we go. We could move that around. That's another thing that with this particular machine, it is touch as well, so you can touch and drag. And we all know delete. Now that I've got my design the way I want it, I'm going to hit end. And I am ready to embroider as soon as I attach my hoop to the machine. And then I remembered, I have to go to the grocery store. So what I'm gonna do is actually save this. I'm going to save it using a USB stick. The first thing that you wanna do is insert this into the side of your machine. 
Now make sure you watch out for it because it disappears pretty quickly, but it'll say saving. So I'm going to hit this little pocket and you can decide whether or not you want to save it to the machine or save it to the USB stick. I'm saving it to the USB stick. Now I can remove my USB stick and it's saved. Now I can continue as soon as I come back from the grocery store. Doot, 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 doot. Back from the grocery store. So now we want to retrieve our design. We just insert this into the side of the machine, hit the USB button, and then your pocket pulls up. I've got a few already saved on there, but we were working on our K. Just select that and hit set. Now we can continue. Here's where the hoop is going to attach to the embroidery unit. You would have your fabric hooped and you would just carefully place it underneath the foot. And then these little nubs here fit into the slot. I find it easiest to get it all lined up and then on this machine, pull back this little tab and then slide it in and they just kind of drop in. And then once they're lowered, then you can release. If at any point in this video you have learned something, if you could take a moment to hit that like button, it would be greatly appreciated. Also, while you're at it, if you want to just hit that subscribe button as well, that way you'll get notified of any future video that we have. So now we're going to thread our machine. We need to pass the thread through the foot. Now some embroidery machines you need to drop down your needle and pull up your needle thread. With this particular model, you don't have to do that. You just do about eight to 10 stitches. Stop, lift it up, and then cut away the extra thread. You just don't want that to get stuck in there. Now you can lower your presser foot and start embroidering. We're using the Baby Lock Verve today. It's a fantastic, beginner-friendly, combination sewing and embroidery machine. The great thing about using a combination machine is I'm going to be able to complete the whole project on this particular model. We'll be able to stitch out our design and then take the embroidery unit off and use it as a sewing machine. And then we'll be able to construct our bag. Once you hit embroidery, it brings you to this page and it's going to tell you each color, how long it's going to take and how many stitches you're at. All done with the white, now we're going to switch it out and do the green. Okay, so again we need to pass the thread through the foot. We don't have to pull the bobbin thread up with this machine, so I'm just going to lower it and do a few stitches. Lift it up here so I have a better view. And snip that. I really should have grabbed an embroidery scissor. They work way better. Lower our presser foot and start again. All right, all done. So I'm gonna clip this first. Okay, so let's lift up the foot. So I'll get that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. That tab again, I'm gonna pull it back and kind of work it out. Lift it up straight. Just be careful because the hoop is still under the foot. So once you get to this point, I usually like to drop it down. Now I can carefully remove it from the machine. Time to unhoop our project. So now once I have the seam allowance in there and I'll be putting a channel for the drawstring, I think that'll be a nice placement. Sweet. Okay, so next, we just need to remove our stabilizer. Again, this is a tear away, so we can simply tear it away. Once you get to the stitches, kind of hold them down. You just don't want to distort any stitches or pull any out. You can go in with the little tweezers and take the stuff out that's in the middle. 
This is going to be hidden because I'm making a lined bag. You're not even going to see this, but you can still go through and take it all off if you want. Isn't that tear away awesome? Super easy. All right, let's make our bag. If you're interested in the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this drawstring bag, I'll include a link for it at the end of this video. Thank you so much for joining me on this little embroidery journey. I hope that you've learned something. Until next time.